Sukimaki is a type of Japanese food made on a hot griddle. It resembles a thin crepe loaded with cabbage, pork, soba noodles, and other savory ingredients. Then a special sauce is brushed on to create one of Japan's most universally loved foods. The manager of this Okonomiyaki restaurant hails from Guatemala. His name is Fernando Lopez. His establishment is in Hiroshima, which is a place people all over Japan associate with good Okonomiyaki. The competition is fierce, but the restaurant run by Lopez is one of the most popular in town. <laughs> On this edition of Japanophiles, we meet Fernando Lopez, who runs a successful Okonomiyaki restaurant. What's his secret to serving up delicious Japanese food? Welcome to Japanology Plus, I'm Peter Barakan. Today we present another of our Japanophile profiles. I'm in Hiroshima, which is a good four hours west of Tokyo on the bullet train, so let's move right along and go and see Fernando Lopez. The restaurant run by Lopez is in a quiet spot just off a big main road. Well, this is the place. Lopez, Guatemala. Hello. Please come on in. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Peter Barakan. Fernando Lopez. Please sit down. So, can you make me one of your specials? Yes. It's been quite a long time since I've had one of these, actually. Hiroshima Okonomiyaki? I uh, actually, I very rarely eaten the Hiroshima style. It's a little different, isn't it? Yes. I guess. We don't see, wow, that's a lot of cabbage. <laughs> Before we go any further, let's see what goes into making okonomiyaki. <laughs> cabbage is absolutely essential. Lopez goes through 20 to 30 kilograms of cabbage each day. He spends about an hour just chopping. It might look like he's tasting the cabbage, but he's actually checking how moist it is. A lot of water on it. He adjusts how he chops the day's cabbage depending on how moist it is. Moister cabbage he slices into thicker strips, less moist into thinner strips. This is because cabbage with more moisture shrinks more during cooking. The moisture level of the cabbage also affects cooking time. Lopez gauges that as he chops the day's supply. He says that piling the cabbage up, trapping plenty of air inside, helps it steam better. Let's see how he makes the batter. The milk, water, eggs and flour all need to be cold. He has to work fast. To get the best out of the ingredients, everything in the mix must be equally cool. Lopez also adjusts the proportions to the day's temperature and humidity. Put the whole thing in your mouth. Much 
He adjusts the consistency and tastes it again. Hmm. He always rests the batter for at least three hours in the fridge before using it. Okay. Lopez is also picky about the griddle on which he cooks. This steel plate is 31 millimeters thick. Typically, it would be only 19 millimeters. It takes longer to heat up a thicker griddle, but once it's heated, it will hold on to its heat longer. Lopez starts heating the griddle an hour before opening to bring it up to the cooking temperature. He keeps different areas of the griddle at different temperatures to use for specific purposes. Cooler sections are for steaming cabbage. Hotter sections to give the soba noodles a perfect texture. Because Lopez may keep more than 10 servings of okonomiyaki cooking at the same time, he needs very stable heat in each part of the griddle. From how he chops the cabbage to his choice of appliances, Lopez strives for excellence. And that's why diners fill the seats from the moment the restaurant opens. Hiroshima really likes its okonomiyaki, oh, yes, doesn't it? Yes. Everywhere you go, it's a culture. It. It's, the, yeah. it's a culture. Yeah. They call it soul food. Oh, okay. <laughs> but how did Hiroshima okonomiyaki become the much loved dish that it is today? It was invented in the post war years of food shortages. This was a meal you could whip up with just flour and a few vegetables. By around 1960, the dish had become so popular that Hiroshima had about 50 food stands crammed into Okonomi Village. Okonomiyaki was established as Hiroshima's soul food, and to this day, locals enjoy trying out new places in their search for the best version. So everybody has their favorite places where yes, they go. and they recommend each other. Uh -huh. And so you have to know which ones are popular and what's, uh -huh. what's the difference. So everybody uh, eats around and they compare uh -huh. and they watch. So uh -huh. they come to watch me. Oh, they come to watch you? Yeah, and they so, say, why you don't do that? Why you do that? So do you make them in a different way from some other people? No, no, no. I make it the same way, but they come to watch how I make it. Oh. So they compare to other stores. So they're always uh, learning about Okonomi. So if you're busy, you'll be doing how many at the same time? I can do up to 24 at one time. 24? Yeah. Wow, but that's, that's more than you've got seats in here. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is the busiest time, lunchtime or evening? Evening. Evening. From 7.30 to 8.30. Okay. Uh, after work. Okay. Not just eat here, but they take out. In Hiroshima, they, they take out Okonomi. Oh, I see them. OK. Yeah. And the egg is the end. Oh, no, there's an egg goes on top. Yeah, at the top. Oh. One person eats the whole thing? Yes. You're kidding yes. me. <laughs> so so nori? Ao nori? Uh, OK. Seaweed? Uh, seaweed, yeah. And little pepper. Uh-huh. And that's oh, more sauce, sauce if you, if you, if like, you want if it. You want. Okay. You can eat it from your right side. And okay. Easier to pick it up. Thank you. Small pieces are... Yeah. It's <laughs> very hot. <laughs> it's very hot. Yeah, I can imagine. Probably going to have to blow on it a little bit. Mm <laughs> it is hot. Yeah. Actually, it's delicious and it's very soft. It's much more soft than I was expecting because you've been frying it for quite a long time. Oh. It's delicious. Very good, nice. Good. Yeah. Oops, well, I'm not very good at doing this. Hold on. <laughs> ah. 
I'm making a mess of it now. Sorry. It's all right. It takes a little practice. Mm. 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 That's hot, though. <laughs> and it sits on just the hill all the yeah. time so it doesn't get cold. I guess yeah. that's a good thing because it yes. keeps it hot as well. And then uh, as you eat it, it changes the flavor because it's cooking. Oh, it's still cooking while yes. you're eating, of course. So everybody eats it different. You can eat it from the outside and let the middle cook. Uh -huh. Or you can eat it, some people eat it from the middle <laughs> and let the outside get a real crisp and then eat it crisp. So it's like uh -huh. the eating cooking their own food. Okay. of Japanese food made on a hot griddle. It resembles a thin crepe loaded with cabbage, pork, soba noodles and other savory ingredients. Then a special sauce is brushed on to create one of Japan's most universally loved foods. The manager of this Okonomiyaki restaurant hails from Guatemala. His name is Fernando Lopez. His establishment is in Hiroshima, which is a place people all over Japan associate with good Okonomiyaki. The competition is fierce, but the restaurant run by Lopez is one of the most popular in town. <laughs> On this edition of about open air, like a Latin southwestern style restaurant. That's mm -hmm. what, that was the basic kind of Tex Mex kind of thing. Yeah, kind of like advanced Tex Mex. Okay. It's okay. a little bit um, better quality. Did it's, you try to do that here? No, we did. We, that that was the thing. Hiroshima didn't have uh, many ingredients. So, uh, okay. like, just to find some of the spices and things would be difficult. So, okay. talking about it, one of my uh, my wife's auntie said, what about okonomiyaki? It's uh -huh. the opposite. Did you know okonomiyaki at the time? Yes, yes. You did? We used to live in the United States, and my wife craved okonomiyaki. She said, I want to eat okonomiyaki. <laughs> so I said, what is that? What is that? And say, I I cannot explain it. You have to see it. So. When I first came to Japan, I told her, take me to, to eat okonomiyaki, see what uh, you were craving. Uh -huh. So I knew okonomiyaki, yes. Okay. And I, we started researching, and, mm. and it happened that the friend of a friend was working in famous okonomiyaki shop in Hiroshima. Uh -huh. I didn't know about uh -huh. And when we went, I saw him making it, and I was like, I was really impressed. Like, you just uh -huh. saw it, the okay. same thing. Okay. I just, I was exactly the same as you. Okay. But we like to do this. Uh -huh. When an immigrant tries to make a living in a new country, a lot of people open restaurants. I mean, in, when I was growing up in London, for example, mm -hmm. there were a lot of Indian restaurants. Oh. And if you're going to eat a curry, you'll go and get it from an Indian person. Oh, yes. But for a person in Hiroshima to go and eat okonomiyaki, <laughs> you would probably not necessarily expect to go to a restaurant run by a Guatemalan. Yes, yes. Did that make it more difficult for you when you started? I, you know, I, I tried to make it as, as good as I can. And we don't want to be like a, a specialty economiaki. You, know? you eat it only sometimes. Uh -huh. So more casual. Okay. I just cook. Uh, and that was the master's idea that let the customer be satisfied with one of them. of Japanese food made on a hot griddle. 
It resembles a thin crepe loaded with cabbage, pork, soba noodles and other savoury ingredients. Then a special sauce is brushed on to create one of Japan's most universally loved foods. The manager of this Okonomiyaki restaurant hails from Guatemala. His name is Fernando Lopez. His establishment is in Hiroshima, which is a place people all over Japan associate with good Okonomiyaki. The competition is fierce, but the restaurant run by Lopez is one of the most popular in town. <laughs> On this edition of Japanophiles, we meet Fernando Lopez, who runs a successful Okonomiyaki restaurant. What's his secret to serving up delicious Japanese food? Welcome to Japanology Plus, I'm Peter Barakan. Today we present another of our Japanophile profiles. I'm in Hiroshima, which is a good four hours west of Tokyo on the bullet train, so let's move right along and go and see Fernando Lopez. The restaurant run by Lopez is in a quiet spot just off a big main road. Well, this is the place. There are people who study with me for 10 years, or at least seven or eight years. Even the idea of one year is unthinkable. That's because the guy's restaurant will fail and then he'll be saddled with debt. We're very proud. This place is so popular. He was saying that, you know, it's very rare that somebody would graduate from his school, as it were, <laughs> so quickly. Yeah. But you think that was because you were already a professional chef? Yeah, that helps a lot, yeah. So he say you only need economically the knowledge, the basic knowledge. So he didn't let me do other works anymore, like cleaning, cutting. Ah, OK. See? So he say stay here next to me, and, I, and I'll show you the okonomiyaki that I want to make. Uh -huh. And he took one sometimes and make one himself to the end to show me and then serve it to the customer so yeah he was very nice with me and he he told me i want to teach you but people will come and ask you to teach them so please teach them too but i didn't know yeah, yeah. i don't know how he knew that that was going to happen uh -huh. but he saw it somehow oh uh, interesting yeah so he said please if if you i think people will come and ask you, mm. so, mm. so I say, I, yeah, I'll do it, and mm. no, 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 no secrets. Okay, because quite often in Japan, people, if they do have something special, they will keep it a secret. Yeah, some people. Well, do, not yes. just in Japan, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yes. In the restaurant business, I'm sure. Yeah, yes, be yes. yeah, But he say, if if we if we teach everybody at least something good, uh -huh. the whole okonomiyaki will get better. Wow. That's a so, very nice philosophy. Yes. Yeah. And other Okonomiyaki shops owners come here and, and, and ask me questions about wow. it. Yeah. And that's, I tell them. That's really flattering, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, very, very flattering. Oh. Yes. Did, over the years, did you develop some of your own unique methods of preparing? I haven't changed anything uh, about the making it, the economy. The, the, the recipe is the same. Hmm. I haven't. I try not to change because hmm. that's the mistake everybody makes that it changes something and then everything goes wrong so okay I just got used to the grill so I can adjust the temperature and timing mm -hmm. better than before um, with the practice <laughs> mm. but no I don't want to change mm. any anything but to get to the point where you are now where even other chefs will come and ask yes. you for advice was there anything special that kind of made you stand out from the crowd? Because uh, I was I was making side menu, uh -huh. 
like uh, chili, like beans and okay. stews, oh, wow. chicken fajitas, and oh. things like that. Sounds I made my own salsa. Oh. So I was making my own salsa for the dishes, mm. and uh, I had spices because I like spices. In the beginning, one customer, he used to come every day, he would come to eat at dinner time, and mm -hmm. he saw the spices and he said, Make something different for me. I say, What can I do? I say, Just put something, one of those cans in there. I say, No, that won't, that won't go well. And they'll come next time and say the same thing. <laughs> put something, something different, something. Uh -huh. Make it different. I say no. I don't know. I don't want to change it. Uh -huh. And then, but one day I was making salsa and I was making. I was cutting jalapenos. Uh -huh. And then he say, "But well, you put something." I say, mm, "I look at mm, maybe jalapenos won't hurt." Jalapenos. Jalapenos, a key ingredient in Mexican cuisine. Lopez tried using pickled jalapenos. So we started doing the jalapenos with this regular customer, and he sometimes add cheese to it. Huh. And then he recommend, hmm. if you eat this, you can add cheese to it. Oh, he would that, tell the other customers. Yeah, yeah. so everybody started saying, well, cheese goes well with jalapenos. Okay. And beer, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the jalapeno is a, is a snack in, in Central America. We drink beer and eat jalapenos. You just eat jalapenos yeah, by yeah. themselves? Yeah, well, you go to a bar and they give you jalapenos. Brave people no, in Central no, America. It's, it's, it's like it's kimono. Let's just eat it like that. Okay, can I try some? Okay, fantastic. Here is okonomiyaki made with a topping of jalapenos. This serendipitous menu item was a winner and made the restaurant's name. <laughs> ジョークでお好みの食べてきましたよ。私本当に辛いのが好きなんですけど、一味とかとは違う辛さが違いますね。美味しい。合う、合いますね。お好み焼きと。<笑><笑><笑> One customer was such a fan that he opened his own restaurant. And of course, okonomiyaki with jalapenos is the featured item. Masaru Hiraoka happened to eat at the restaurant run by Lopez and was amazed at how good the okonomiyaki tasted. He apprenticed to Lopez for two years, then opened his own place in 2010. I didn't have any big plan to open an okonomiyaki place. I just got hooked on what he was making. Learning from Lopez was totally different from Hiraoka's expectations about being apprenticed to a chef. Lopez is great at teaching, especially because I started out with no cooking experience. I'd hardly even used a kitchen knife before. I figured he'd start me with chopping cabbage all day, but he said, well, don't worry about that. When you're ready to open your own place, you'll be chopping till you hate it. You should start by learning things like how to manage the griddle heat and timing. And so, that's what I studied. If it hadn't been for his restaurant, I might not have decided to pursue a career cooking okonomiyaki like this. I think that really could be true. Then we add the jalapenos. Okay. <laughs> a little spicy. Uh huh. So, okay. Uh, wow, that's a there you go. heavy dose of jalapenos. <laughs> <laughs> Gluttons for punishment. <laughs> get a taste of it. Okay. Let's get a bit of the jalapeno now. And I have to. Oops. <laughs> mm. 
Mm. Mm. Spicy. Mm. That's good. I can see why the guy liked it. <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah. I see what you mean about the pickle, because it has that kind of slightly sour feel to it, mm. and the spicy thing it hits you a little after. After, yes. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and then the beer. <laughs> and it does go with the beer, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> oh, that's excellent. It must be very gratifying to have your own invention become popular <laughs> in other restaurants. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I didn't think it was going to catch up that much, but. Yeah, it's been a very good hit. <laughs> a oh. lot of people like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even other shops are used. Do you have any kind of dreams for things you want to do in the future? I'm okay doing what I'm doing. I think it's uh, what I'll be doing for a while. But recently, a lot of people ask, uh, Every foreigner and every and all the Japanese too say, "Can you do it in my city? Can you do it? In, can you?" I wish there was a restaurant like this where mm -hmm. I live. Lately, I was thinking uh, I wouldn't mind to go and teach sometimes. Uh -huh. uh, London, maybe I know there's a lot of people in London. They want me to. I know this would be popular in London, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The British people say, "We'll help you carry the grill." <laughs> 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 in, yeah, I don't know how it's going to happen, but uh, that's just a dream, you know. These Japanophile programs, we always have the same last question, which is, oh. what is Japan to you? For Japan? Oh. Ah. I think it's like a well-forged sword. A sword? A sword, like a katana. Huh. That I can rest and feel secure on there. Oh. and give, give my loyalty to. I appreciate the people of Japan to give my full loyalty to. Hmm. So, that's Japan to me. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next time, changing perceptions of cars. In Japan, one of the world's motor vehicle superpowers, the public perception of cars is rapidly evolving.